Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Stopping the puck is the bread and butter of being a goaltender within the sport of hockey. As a team's last line of defence, a netminder's ability to make a key save when it matters most will determine whether they become the go-to guy between the pipes or whether they see limited action as the backup option instead. Over the last few years, goalies in the National Hockey League have faced on average 30-32 to 32 shots on goal per game, meaning that approximately every two minutes of playing time, they encounter a situation where a mistake or a lack of concentration can lead to a goal against for their team and a potential momentum shift in their opponent's favour. Some nights can be quieter or busier than this, of course, but more often than not, NHL netminders face enough chances to keep their heads focused in the game while also getting regular intervals to reset before the fun begins all over again. However, during the league's modern era, one goalie stopped more shots in a single game than anyone else. This is the story of Ron Tugnut and the 70 save performance. In order to tell this incredible tale, allow me to take you back to June 21st, 1986, when Canadian goaltender Ron Tugnut was taken 81st overall at the 1986 NHL draft by the Quebec Nordiques. Having spent another year with the OHL's Peterborough Peets after his selection, the fourth round pick would turn pro shortly after and spend the next two seasons shifting between minor league starter and major league backup as he posted a 34-16-6 record in 58 AHL games, alongside a 12-13-3 record in 32 NHL games. Though he would suit up in eight more minor league games during the following two years of his career, by the end of the 1980s, Tugnut would spend most of his time in the bigs, having earned a more permanent position on the Nordiques roster. During the 89-90 NHL season, Tugnut would take to the ice in 35 games for Quebec, but would struggle to help the team find any lasting success, posting a rather terrible 5-24-3 record, a 4.61 goals against average, and a .859 save percentage. Pretty horrific numbers I know, but it's worth pointing out that the Nordiques were nothing short of a dumpster fire at the time of Tugnut's arrival. In fact, Quebec were the worst team in the entire NHL by a huge margin, not just in the standings, but in practically every single major statistical category. Tugnut's five wins that year actually led all goaltenders on the Nordiques roster, so you could argue that he did the best he could given the pretty dire situation he found himself in. Unfortunately for Quebec, the following 1991 NHL season picked up right where the prior year had left off for them. The Nordiques were still the worst team in the entire league, despite drafting Matt Sundin first overall at the draft, they remained dead last in a number of statistical categories, and though he was now the team's undisputed starting netminder, Tugnut had posted a 10-28-9 record, with just a handful of games left to play before the year was over. Despite the struggles both he and his team had faced all season long, the 23-year-old was about to write his name into the record books. On March 21st, 1991, Tugnut and the Nordiques made the trip to Boston Garden in order to take on the Big Bad Bruins for each team's 75th game of their respective seasons. This matchup was expected to be a rather lopsided affair in favour of the hometown team, since Boston was sitting top of the Wales Conference thanks to a 41, 23 and 10 record, while Quebec sat rock bottom in that same conference thanks to an abysmal 14, 48 and 12 record. Though the odds were anything but in their favour, the Nordiques netminder was about to produce one of the greatest goaltending performances the league has ever seen. As the puck was dropped and the game got underway, the hometown side came out swinging. Shot after shot was being sent towards the Quebec net, but Tugnut dug deep and rose to the occasion every single time. Despite putting up 17 shots on goal during the first 20 minutes of playing time, the Boston Bruins found themselves with a 1-0 deficit thanks to a goal from Nordiques defenseman Randy Velischek 13 minutes into the period. Once the middle stanza had begun though, the Bruins wouldn't take long to finally get themselves on the board, as Boston's Ken Hodge put the puck past Tugnut just 15 seconds into the frame. However, this 1-1 tie wouldn't last very long, as just 90 seconds later, Nordique's forward Mark Vermette potted his second goal of the year to help Quebec regain the lead early in the period. 
The rest of the second would remain scoreless, but it wasn't for lack of trying from the Bruins, as Tugnut had to make another 18 saves to keep the score in his team's favour, bringing his overall total to 35 saves after just 40 minutes of play. Now if you thought his night had been impressive so far, the third period would see Tugnut take his game to a completely unprecedented level. Despite allowing a pair of goals courtesy of Bruins forward Nevin Markward and Boston captain Ray Bork, the game was tied at three apiece at the end of regulation time thanks to a tally from Nordique's blue liner Alexei Gusarov. Considering Quebec had been outshot 25-5 during the final 20 minutes of play, Tugnut had practically stood on his head in order to keep his team in the running. Due to the league's rulebook at the time, a five minute overtime period would be played in order to try and break the deadlock, but if neither team scored then each side would be awarded a tie. Having already made 58 saves that night, and with the possibility of stealing a point or even more against the top team in their division, Tugnut was ready to round off his heroic performance. With just a single goal separating both teams, Boston threw everything they had at Tugnut during the overtime period, peppering him with shots and generating quality scoring chances for the entire five minutes of play. No attempt was more gripping than Ray Bork's point-blank opportunity with just eight seconds left to play, as he fired his NHL record 19th shot on goal towards what he thought was a wide open cage, but Tugnut somehow found a way to stone him cold by catching it in his glove. Once the final buzzer sounded, the two teams had been unable to notch another goal, so the game ended in a 3-3 tie. Despite being outshot 12-2 in the overtime period, Tugnut had stopped each of the dozen chances he had faced and had found a way to steal a point from the hometown side. This incredible individual performance prompted Bruins star Cam Neely to insist that Tugnut take a bow in front of the packed Boston Arena, which prompted the fans in attendance to congratulate the goalie's effort with a standing ovation. It's not every day you see an away player get a round of applause from the home fans, eh folks? Once the two teams returned to their dressing rooms and the stats were all confirmed, it was revealed that Ron Tugnut had made an incredible 70 saves on 73 shots between the pipes that night. 70 saves in 65 minutes of game time. That's over a shot per minute for the entire game. This impressive total set a new modern day NHL record for the most saves by a goaltender in a single regular season game, surpassing Mario Lassard's 65 save performance against the Minnesota North Stars on March 24th, 1981. However, this total puts Tugnut just second place on the all-time saves list across the league's entire 104-year history, as Chicago Blackhawks netminder Sam Lepresti made 80 saves on 83 shots, also against the Boston Bruins, all the way back on March 4th, 1941. What is it with incredible goaltending performances in the month of March? Now, considering how disappointing the season had been for both Tugnut and the Nordiques at the time, there was very little reason for the Canadian netminder to produce such a historic performance that night. After all, Quebec were by far the worst team in the entire league, Tugnut once again received very little help in front of him from his teammates, and the Nordiques wouldn't gain much in the standings by trying to beat Boston, especially since there was only a handful of games left to play in the regular season. It would have been very easy for Tugnut to go through the motions, take another loss and move on to the next game in the schedule. Yet despite all of that, for one night in 1991, Ron Tugnut decided to carry the entire Nordiques organisation on his back, show the league that he could rival one of the NHL's best teams almost single-handedly, and produce one of the greatest goaltending efforts the National Hockey League has ever seen. I mean, the guy got a standing ovation from thousands of Boston Bruins fans. That never happens. Following his record-breaking performance, Ron Tugnut would play in three of the final five games of Quebec's regular season and finish the year with a 12, 29 and 10 record, a 4.04 goals against average, and a .886 save percentage in 56 games. Yeah, I think we should give him a break on this one, folks. I mean, he did just destroy a modern-day record on a terrible hockey team, you know. From there, the former fourth-round draft pick would go on to play another 12 seasons in the NHL, split between eight different organisations, finishing his career with an 186, 239 and 62 record, a 3.05 career goals against average, and a .895 career save percentage in 537 regular season games. 
Not the greatest numbers you'll ever see in the NHL, but this lengthy stint in the best league in the world did yield Tugnut a couple of 20-win seasons later on in his career, along with several honours and accolades as well. Not only would he tie the Ottawa Senators franchise record for the highest regular season save percentage, and set the Pittsburgh Penguins franchise record for the highest playoff percentage with a .945, Tugnut is also the first and only goaltender in NHL history to record the first ever win for two different expansion franchises, those being the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim and the Columbus Blue Jackets. Interestingly though, Tugnut would somehow produce another 70 save performance during his NHL career, this time during a playoff game on May 14th, 2000. As a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Canadian netminder stopped 70 of the first 71 shots he faced against the Philadelphia Flyers, before Philly put a second puck past him during the fifth overtime period and took the victory for themselves. After suiting up in 11 games with the Dallas Stars during the 03-04 NHL season, and with a lockout looming on the horizon, the 37-year-old netminder decided that it was time to call it quits on his career as he announced his retirement shortly after the season had come to an end. Once he had hanged up his skates for good, the former fourth round pick would spend a few seasons as a colour commentator for CBC's Hockey Night in Canada, before joining his national team's under-18 programme in order to serve as a goaltending coach. Tugnut would then go on to serve a variety of roles for a variety of teams in a variety of leagues over the next nine seasons, including goaltending coach for several divisions of Team Canada, assistant coach of the OHL's Peterborough Peets, as well as the head coach and franchise owner of the Central Canada Hockey League's Kemptville 73s, a role he served until the conclusion of the 1617 season. So a guy who spent parts of 17 seasons in the best league in the world, posted well under a 500 record for most of his time in the bigs, and produced one of the single greatest goaltending performances the NHL has ever seen, has gone on to spend a decade in coaching, and has even worked with Hockey Night in Canada. I guess sometimes, the most impressive results can come from the unlikeliest of heroes. And that's the story of Ron Tugnut and the 70 save performance. What do you guys think about Tugnut's historic game or his NHL career as a whole? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Drew Fawcett, Jordan Whitehead, Martin Tolness, Roman from London, Tom from Finland, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.